Jun Zhang is our next speaker, and her title for this afternoon is The Effects of Topology on Epidemics, Neuron Communication, and Other Applications. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. In a mere decade, these social networks have become pervasive in our everyday lives. The idea is that we need to understand networks, which shows the interconnection, the relationship between multiple people or multiple objects, is similarly sweeping across academia in vastly different disciplines, such as sociology, epidemiology, chemistry, neurobiology, or computer science. A lot of recent research has been devoted to try to understand what useful information is embedded in these networks. For example, this one here. That there is useful information is pretty easy to see. Suppose we're interested in understanding how the flu spreads through a population. Now, if everyone just stays indoors and doesn't go outside, then only a few people will become sick. The network, which represents the contact relationship in this population, is one where no one is connected. But if, on the other hand, everyone goes outside and shakes hands with everyone else in the population, then it's pretty easy to see that the flu will get spread around pretty quickly. We call the network, which represents this type of contact relationship, where each person is, interacts with everyone else, the complete graph. Now, obviously, the real world is somewhere between these two extreme cases. And that is the goal of my research, to develop mathematical models which will give us insight into how network structures affect the propagation of viruses or units of information through a population. This is a challenging problem because our current existing mathematical tools are really good at analyzing for the two extreme cases. We don't really know yet as to how to deal with more realistic network structures. But it's important that we develop models and tools to do this because research has shown that once we go beyond the two extreme cases, one where no one's connected or everyone's connected, then we start to see some really interesting and unexpected behavior that we observe in the real world, but previously we could not explain with mathematical models. And when we do have models that give us insights into how network structure affects the propagation of virus or information through a population, then we can begin to better develop tools that ultimately may prevent epidemics or halt blackouts in the power grid or even give us a better understanding of the human brain.